What? 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 Watch, I'm getting a lot better at this. Hi friends, welcome to today's video. My name is Chloe, see Shoddy Hill, and thank you for tuning in on another episode of My Douchey Life. Uh, if you're a returning subscriber, you know how I feel about you already. You know that I love and appreciate you very much. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you consider subscribing to my channel and turning on the notification bell so that you get notified when I upload a new video. And all of my videos are pretty fantastic. So if you like this one, even if you don't like this one, so please subscribe and, you know, comment, share, like it, you know, whatever. Do the things, thank you. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk a little more about um, separation anxiety in dogs. And I wanted to kind of share more details about dealing with copper separation anxiety. For those who don't know, copper is my five-year-old basset hound. He's outside playing right now. He was kind of throwing a tantrum. He doesn't want to be in the video, so I'll try to get him in the video in a little bit. But I do have Luna with me today. Hey, Luna. And Matilda, what do you want, babe? This is my baby Matilda. If you've watched any of my other videos about my Basset Hound, you've probably heard me mention that separation anxiety was a big issue that we had to overcome together. And I just wanted to start off by saying I'm not an expert. I didn't go to school for animals or anything like that. I'm just telling you what I know based off my own research and my own experience. Because, you know, I think I might be able to help someone. Before I talk about my personal experience, I just wanted to share some basic information about separation anxiety in dogs. And I got most of this information online, most of it from the ASPCA website, ASPCA.org. The most common symptoms of separation anxiety include barking excessively, trying to escape, pacing the house, or, this one is bad, coprophage, coprof, coprophagia. That means eating your own poop. That's very bad, we do not want that. Um, urinating and defecating, or chewing, digging, other destructive behaviors. And the main distinction between just, you know, regular behavioral problems in dogs and separation anxiety is all those things that I just listed, if they're only happening when you're not with your dog, that is most likely a sign of separation anxiety. If they happen while you're there, while you're home with your dog, then your dog has some other behavioral issues that need to be addressed in other ways. It's normal for a dog to maybe, you know, bark if they see someone walking by the window or they see another dog outside or an animal. That's normal, but if it isn't triggered by anything, then that could be a sign of distress and separation anxiety. Okay, they came to join me. Thank you, glad you could make it to today's video. So for those who don't know, this is Oliver and this is Copper. Okay, okay, moving on. So some of the potential causes of, okay, bye. Separation anxiety, to me, they mainly revolve around like changes in their environment or their lifestyle. The changes that I'm referring to are like if you have a new owner or if your schedule changes drastically, like if your dog is used to you working from home and then all of a sudden you're going to work for eight hours a day, that's enough to upset anybody, especially an anxious dog. Or if you moved, you know, like if you just move into a different place, that could stress your dog out a lot, especially if they lived in the same house their whole lives. And even dogs can become really upset if like a family member moves out. Like if you have kids and one of them goes away to college or something, that can also be really upsetting to some dogs. Now, before I go into some of the things you might be able to do to help with the separation anxiety, I also wanted to mention there are a couple medical conditions that you might confuse for separation anxiety that should definitely not be overlooked. And those can include, you know, a UTI, some type of bladder infection, neurological issues, diabetes, or even side effects from certain medications that they could be on. So those are all things to keep in mind. And when in doubt, I always recommend going to see a vet and talking to them. In addition to me saying, you know, go to the vet and talk about whatever your issues are, um, the ASPCA also recommends consulting with a, a an expert on dog behavior, such as 
a certified applied animal behaviorist or a board certified veterinary behaviorist. And like I said, I'm not one of those. So I just like my dog. I just love my dog. And I just like to do research about how, what his behaviors mean and how to better serve him as his owner. Okay, so the first thing that you want to kind of figure out is you need to determine if your dog has what I think is called pre-departure anxiety. So there are these things that I learned about called pre-departure cues. And it's actually kind of self-explanatory. Like if I'm going out, I'm gonna grab my purse, I might grab my car keys, I might put my shoes on, maybe a jacket if I live somewhere where it gets cold, maybe sunglasses, you know, just like the things you do before you get ready to leave. Just like when you go on vacation and you're having your suitcase packed and the suitcase comes out of the closet and your animals are like, what the heck, where are you going? That's a, a pre-departure cue. Hubbard, can you please be in the video? No one's gonna watch this if you're not in the video. Can one of you please be in the video with me? Okay, Ollie, thanks. Thanks, okay. So yes, you can start desensitizing your dog to the pre-departure cues pretty easily as long as you're consistent. So I might just, you know, get dressed, grab my purse, grab my keys, act like I'm gonna leave, and I'm just gonna sit on the couch and watch TV. You know, see how your dog reacts. And if the dog gets really anxious and nervous, excited, starts panting, and becomes uncomfortable, then you know this is where you need to start. Which I did attempt to do myself a couple years ago. This is how we fix the separation anxiety, but I don't know if I did it right. The thing is, I did so, I tried so many different things to help with copper separate. Obviously he doesn't care if he's separated from me now, right? I did so many different things, not sure exactly what helped him, but I'll talk about that later. But we did do all these things. The next step is moving to out of sight, out of sight stay exercises. That's what they're called, I guess. And that means all like, Pretend like I'm gonna go, and then instead of going out the front door, I like go in the bathroom and like sit in the bathroom for a second. <laughs> and so you can use interior doors of your house instead of actually like going out the front door or leaving the actual house. So just so your dog it can't see you and so you're out of sight. Does that make sense? So the trick to working up to longer periods of time is you wanna come back in the room before your dog starts getting upset. So if your dog starts whining and freaking out and then you open the door and walk back in to be with them, I'm pretty sure that that's just reinforcing that behavior and he thinks, oh, if I throw a tantrum and cry, then they're just gonna come back. And that's not what we want to enforce. We want them to feel confident and know that even though you're leaving, you will always come back to them. That's the goal here. So you're gonna wanna start with very short durations and then eventually over time, I'm sorry that they're so loud. Eventually over time, and by time, I mean weeks to months, consistently doing this multiple times a day, every day, you can move up to longer periods of time and you can move up to actually going outside of the house. And once you can work up to about 40 minutes at a time, that's a really good point to get to because research shows that the majority of um, anxiety behaviors, the majority of problem behaviors occur within the first 40 minutes of the dog being left alone. So if you can work them up to 40 minutes, then it should be a lot easier to get them more comfortable with, you know, four hours. And then eventually, I think a dog should be able to be alone for eight hours because, you know, that's the average work day. And I think that they should be okay for eight hours. So that's basically the main technique. If you're gonna try that, I think you should do more research aside from just watching my video, but that's just kind of a little idea of what you're gonna have to do if you have a dog with separation anxiety. Oh, I completely forgot the first thing to do. If your dog has mild separation anxiety, something that might work without going through all of that crazy stuff is counter conditioning. And that just means associating something that they don't like with something that is happy and that they do like. So for dogs like Basset Hounds, for example, they're very highly food motivated. So if I give Copper food before I leave, he's distracted by it. And then we know when I, by the time I'm out of the door, he doesn't even really realize that I left and he's fine. He doesn't have enough time to get worked up and anxious. But the trick to that is 
take it away when you get back home because you want them to associate this extra special high value treat with them being normal and fine with you leaving. Some tips I wanted to go over are, you know, just little things to keep in mind when you're trying to help your dog who may have separation anxiety. And the first one is don't punish your dog. If you leave your dog unattended and they have separation anxiety and they destroy the house, punishing them is not gonna help. It's probably just gonna make it worse. So you, you just can't punish them for doing something, especially if you're not even there to see them do it. They won't associate it with, with what they did. They'll just think you're being mean for no reason, okay? Physical activity and mental stimulation is extremely important for well-behaved dogs. If a dog is understimulated and you know doesn't get enough exercise, they're not gonna behave right. Right, Hopper? Right. They're not gonna do the right thing. They're just not. I also wanted to say, crate training is not for every dog, but I think it's very important if you don't trust your dog to not get into things, I would recommend crating because it's always safest. But if there's you know any possibility that they could eat something toxic to them or electrocute themselves or any choke, I don't know, I would always recommend keeping them in a crate without a collar or a leash, of course. Really bad things can happen if you try to put your dog in a crate with a leash on. Never, ever, ever do that. Please never do that. Copy doesn't want you to do that. Right? So, to end the video, I just wanted to talk a little about more in detail about what me and Copper tried with his separation anxiety and more his specific issues. I did try to create train Copper when he was a puppy and it was not easy. I don't know, it, it was a long time ago. It was like five years ago. But there were some times when he would literally break out of his crate and I still don't know how he got out. And I'd come home from class and like an entire notebook would be shredded up and my entire apartment would be covered in shredded up paper. Um, he would destroy stuff. And then I really pissed off a lot of my neighbors because he he would bark incessantly. And of course it sucks that like knowing he's in distress is terrible, but also the possibility of us getting evicted is also pretty scary. There were several times when I was in college when I came home to police at my door because my neighbors had called the police because Copper just would not stop barking. When I went away on vacation and asked my mom to take care of Copper, she said he just would not stop barking like every day. And by the time I got back less than a week later, he lost his voice from barking so much. That's horrible. So at that point I knew I needed more professional help. You know what I'm saying? So we took him to the vet. At that point, it was probably at like the peak of it being really bad when he was about two years old. So I decided to go ahead and get him neutered. I wanted to wait until he was like fully grown and developed to even consider getting him neutered. It doesn't matter, but I tried it because I thought it might help because I read some stuff that said it might help. And then the vet also suggested putting him on like a, a doggy antidepressant and that seemed to help. And then I also obviously, you know, I tried everything. I think the, the Kong with the peanut butter, like giving him treats or like puzzle treats while I left really helped him. And also I did do the desensitizing thing where I would like leave for a couple minutes and then come back in if he wasn't crying and I would just do that over and over and over again. And it took a really long time. But now Copper's separation anxiety is not an issue. He doesn't destroy anything. He doesn't really, can you stop? Can you stop? He doesn't destroy anything. He doesn't bark incessantly. He doesn't really have accidents anymore. And I can trust him, but it, it really wasn't easy and it, it takes a lot of dedication and persistence on the part of you, the human, the owner. Dogs need consistency. They need structure. They, you know, they're just some things that they, they won't understand because you can't reason with a dog like you can reason with a human. So if you have a dog with separation anxiety, just know that you can't overcome it and I'm sorry he's doing that and it will be okay. Just, you know, utilize your resources and just stick with it because you'll get through it, trust me. If I can get through it, you can get through it. I hope this video might have helped someone. If anything, I hope it made you feel less alone. As I'm sure you know by now, I appreciate you so much. 
I can't wait to make the next video and spend some more time with you guys because this is like my favorite thing to do. So until next time, Gabby loves you. Matilda loves you. Right? Ollie loves you. <laughs> you love him? And Luna probably doesn't love you. She hates being held, but eh, we love you, okay? I hope you have an amazing day. Take care. And yeah, please let me know what videos you'd like to see. Please give me some ideas. I just never know what you guys are gonna think is interesting. I just don't, it's just hard for me to know, so. Let me know. It always surprises me what videos get the most views. It's always funny. I'll leave you with this. You are capable of anything that you put your mind to. If you wanna do it, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You go out and do it. Let the haters be your motivators. Love you.